Hello everybody, hope you're all having a no blessed day. For today's video, we are back on the Yu-Gi-Oh card database to look at another pack that we used to have in the past, the TCG. Yes, we're going back and going through every single pack in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh and the TCG, looking for every single card, but something I'm going to try differently for this episode is that I'm not going to make a top 5 list, because I feel like that's kind of getting stale, so I'm going to try something new. So, I'm kind of going to make kind of a challenge for myself, not really that much of a challenge, but I'm going to use only the cards found in that pack, and I'm going to show you what I would make for my ideal deck with only those cards in that pack. Alright? And I'll kind of show you my deck profile and kind of explain why I made the deck the way I did. Okay? So, tell me in the comment section if this is like in the video, if this is something you'd like me to see you do instead, when I go through all the different packs in the game of TCG Yu-Gi-Oh! Or would you like me to try something else? Okay? So, with that in mind, let's go and see what our pack is for today. Alright? So let's go all the way back down to the bottom. We did like a uh, Labyrinth of Nightmare in the last time. And now we have Legacy of Darkness. Hmm. I don't exactly know what comes in this pack, but you know what? Let's check it out. So, I'm not going to go through and name every single one of these cards because what now I have kind of a sore throat. But I will go through and kind of stop if I do get to a card I think is actually pretty good or something that's, you know, just something to remember. So going through right now, there isn't much to look at. I so, said, you know, we got Air, the Air Knight. Parshan, you know, this is actually a card I was using GOAT format, then because even though they have a high attack, it did have that piercing effect and they let you draw one. And then found that you get a, a, a universal draw effect, they're usually really good, especially back in GOAT formats, where it's really crucial to draw your outs to like back row if you're MST or Heavy Storm, or even draw your outs to strong monsters such as like Exiled Force. So this is still a really good card, at least not in today's meta, but it was good back in GOATs. So let's keep going. Always oh, stopping again with Zero Priest. Another staple in GOAT format, mainly because it does have the fang you see at the bottom, this card can attack all monster point controls once each. So, if you use AOD and put a quick spell on this card, say like Axe of Desires or Axe of Despair, I can't remember what the card's called. But basically you can make this card a bit of a giant beat stiff, I'd say 2700 attack, and you can just slam through no matter what whatever card your opponent has, and wipe the whole board, and then it goes back to your hand you can use for your next turn. Okay? So this is a really good card to help you just clear big defensive boards. Let's keep going. Bomber's Trap Hole. You know, it was a, was a good card not that long ago. You know, back when I think like Volcanus was kind of seized the popularity when, I, when uh, Lake Cell Reload first came out. I believe this card is still kind of out there in the meta. But definitely in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, stopping one monster, 1,500 or more attack. You know, stopping one is not going to get you in there, okay? That's why you need to have something to eat or two, you know, stop multiple cards. And also because trap cards are slow, so that's why trap cards aren't played on in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because unless you have like infinite permanence, you cannot activate this card on your opponent's turn. So this is basically useless if you're going second. Alright, well, let's keep going. Creature swap, a good card to swap the opponent's monster one of your own. I, I do sometimes use this when I play my uh, Blue Eyes Chaos Max OTK. Alright, let's keep going through. Exile Force I talked about, basically you're one for one to take out one monster for... Your own monster there. You have to waste your normal summon though. We have Fiber Jar in this set, which is cards, well, I think, one of the most broken cards in the game. Literally says restart the game, basically. On Fane, doesn't say though, because it doesn't have much of a banish back then, I feel like. But basically, you still shove all cards in your hand, fill the graveyard into the deck, and each person draws five. Yeah. That would be crazy in today's meta. Alright, keep going, keep going. Nothing interesting so far. Injection Fairly, and I'll get a nice. The 3,400 beat stick for t only those low plies at 2,000 life points. <laughs> that thing's broken. Keep going, keep going. We're on a captain. We can still see play in Dark Warriors if you really want to play this engine. One, I don't play because I don't like wasting my normal summon this card because I still mean I have to at least get a, a monster in my hand. That can be special to my card, this card's effect because, like, let's say Feltone Thrasher, it does not let me use that card for Feltone Thrasher. So, my opinion, I don't like it. But if you're playing like a 60 card variant, maybe you could toss this card in. Just like the Goblin Bird card, that was basically the exact same thing. Okay, keep going. Reinforcing the army. Which, you know, back in GOAT format, this card was actually at 2, because I believe what, it was put to 2 after the first ban list, I think, or something like that. So, you know, that's something really cool to think about. Even though it's still at 1, it's still a very good card. I'll tell you right now, even today's meta, at least for myself, this card is easy as a 1 card combo. So, very good card. Alright, Royal Oppression, a broken card. Because you can pay your 800, you can pay 800 life points anytime, either player can. And you get to spell summon any monster. 
and, a, and or effective a special summon monster and destroy those cards, okay? So this is a match of these cards even in modern day Yu-Gi-Oh! When every fan is about special summon, unless you're playing, I guess, Ultra Guys. <laughs> or True Jaco. Yeah, this card would be filthy broken. This card's never coming off the list. Even that one? No. Can't have it. Most broken card. This is more broken than Maxi, in my opinion. Yep, keep going. Anything else? I know I used to play this card back on didn't get into anything with the meta. Also, the card is broken. How you can always pierce your opponent and put the defense mode. Just so your opponent won't be able to do any damage to you. Unless they had to own Spirit Dragon. Which did happen. Alright, keep it going. Keep it going. Anything else good? I know I'm going fast through here, but you know. This is a lot of field cards in his deck. Between him and Bahamut. No card used to play back in the day I was in middle school. No, even got destroyed. It did come back on my turn, basically. And I can use it to triple summon into one of my strong cards. Typically, that card you used to triple summon into Jinzo for myself. So that's pretty nice. Probably my favorite boss monster back in, in back in middle school also. During battle, your opponent cannot act can't, your opponent controls the monster after this card first attack. It's gonna make a second attack and negate any trap effects that target this card in the field. Short a trap card. Can't be special in the grave unless you treat one dragon monster. So yeah, I like this card because we did play a lot of cards like Magic Cylinder, and Magic Cylinder could not target this card. Same as Saturate you armor could not target this card. This thing did get destroyed by Mirror Force, it was very unfortunate. But a lot of the Edel really good trap cards, this thing could basically negate them. Okay, it would be affected by them. And it can do two text one turn to kind of clear your opponent's board. Alright. Keep going. I don't know if anything else. If there's one more card. And yeah, good old boy Yadagarasi. You know, the whole Yadagarasi lock. You basically, your opponent, you basically try to, I guess, like, what is it? Nil your opponent's whole hand. Something like that. I do believe, let me check real quick before I go back to that. The card I paired off of that. Somewhere in here. Do do where's that spirit? The whole spirit, all whole spirit lineups is all fucked up. Is it this thing here? Yeah. So this card fixed battery pawn. They can discard. They discard all cards in hand in their hand during the next draw phase before they draw. So this I feel like it was kind of the whole pair off of that. If you had Yadikarasu, I guess somehow got this card out. That was this one way you can do it. Because this card made you punch this card auto card, and then Yadikarasu said they couldn't even draw a card. So at that point, they had zero cards on the first turn. Yeah. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> Alright, so you saw every single card that it was in. Well, I already forgot the name of the set. Scream me a second. It's been so long. Do 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 do. Hello. Legacy of Darkness. I can't believe I'm forgetting this already. So now let's jump into a deck profile I made for you guys. Okay, here we go. This is the 40 card deck profile I made just only using cards found in this set. So starting off, I do have free Exile Force because you know. It, one, I'm gonna say now this deck's gonna get clapped by anything in today's meta. But no, playing Cash is a really good card because a lot of people just probably say go format. This is still a really good card because you can just out, like, say, your Jinzos. You can out whatever strong card they have. They have something that's like powered up with quiz spells. You can out Exile Force. This is really good to out those really problematic monsters. Next, I decided to toss in a free Fiber Jar because why not? It's Fiber Jar. And since I just let myself say I can place any of these cards at free, I decided to toss Fiber Jar as free. Just, you know, it'll be a meme. It's just for the memes. Jackson Fairy, this thing can basically beat over any monster, period. Unless it has, like, body damage protection. Because this thing goes up to 3400. And anything go from that, they didn't really go up to 3400. Alright, so this card is easy. Out to basically any monster. Similar to Exile Force, so I get to keep the monster. Marana Captain, in case I do want to get a no monster set, I can go Marana Captain into Jackson Fairy, really. You know, there's some OTK potentials with that. Similar to Ex Exile Force. North Summer on Captain, Special Summer Exile Force, Triple Exile Force, pop the monster, and it gets in battle news with Marauder Captain. So, you know, there are some potentials with this card. Then I decided to put Opticlops at one, mainly because, well, not one, but three, mainly because it was, it was still basically the strongest normal summon card with really good defense out there. Alright. You can say you use Spirit Drive 1900 or Thunder 99, but both those cards had some really bad draft bikes. Such a spell dragon always be able to get destroyed next turn by any monster could have had zero defense. And Yana Cat had to say you hit get locked into light monsters in your field, and yeah, I don't really play a lot of lights. Next is Twin Handed Behemoth. You know, I play this card, talk about man, because if it does get destroyed by a battle on the end of the turn, I do get it back, which helps me again to attribute some of my next turn and helps me go for game. Then I decided to play two of the Air Knight Parsev, because you know, I don't want to play too many tribute summons. Because, you know, if I do break my multiple troops into my hand, that's going to be really problematic. So I thought I'd just go with two, basically, with all the free, well, I'll say the free best one tribute summons, okay? So this one here is because it has really good pierce damage. And also lets me draw a card if I do 
afflict the answers to my opponent. Then I play Tears to Reprise, which some people say I should play at free if I'm allowed. But I decided to put it at two because the only time I ever want to use this card is when, well, I want to clear most monsters. And starting out, I don't really need that effect. Cards like Opticlops or Exile Force and Jex Failing, those will be way better at the start of a game. And this is kind of for more of the grind. So I don't want to see this at the first turn, but I would like to see this mid game. So that's why I put it at two. Next is Dark World Hadith. I play this card at two. Make has a really good effect that negates its effects of monsters destroy a battle with fiend monsters. So it works for that, and it also works for my Opticlops. So it's basically my best normal summon, in my opinion, for this doing damage, paired off with my Dark World Hadith. Basically, any monster destroys, oh, now I can get the effect. So that's cool. Similar to Lesser Fiend, any monster des this card destroys is banished. And since back in Gophamite, you didn't even have a good way to get your banished cards back. Even in today's meta, banishing a monster is very, very problematic if it's a really good card to have, such as you banished, let's say, a Highly Fibrax or anything like that. You're going to be in some trouble. So, this was a that. I'll put that one at two. This is something you can maybe put at three, similar to Dark Roller, but you know, we're just get messing around. And then I put Tyrant Dragon at two. Even though I probably won't see much play, may I be going into Lesser Fiend or Dark Roller, but it's still a really good card if I'm able to get it out in the grind game. Because my opponent's playing very defensive, send a lot of monsters, while well, this thing is clear two monsters each turn. So, in a couple of turns, you know, I'll be going for game. Also, it's unaffected by trap cards that target him, so it's also a very good effect. Then we have Creature Swap. The reason I'm playing this is that I can also combo it off of the Moronic Captain. Let's say a Moronic Captain into and Chicks and Fairy Lily. I can swap them in my Moronic Captain because I won't need it anymore. Take their boss monster, and then we can do some really good damage that turn, okay? So let's say I take a Jinzo. With Chicks and Fairy Lily, I'm only looking at almost 6k damage. That's really nice. Free reinforcement armies was one that lets me get more on a captain for com combos plays, and it also lets me an exile force. Then we play free bombs trap hole and free royal oppressions, and those are the only traps I'm playing because the problem I saw with this whole set, it has a really a, a really nice like draw pull for like normal summon monsters like exile force, Jackson Fairly, Marana Captain, Twin Headed, Silver Priest. These are all really good normal summon cards. However, it has this whole set is really poor lacking with defensive cards, okay? You see, I don't have any cards that activate in the battle phase, okay? I can stop a card to win summon. I can stop special summons. But anytime it goes to the battle phase, I'm out of luck. So that's the big drawback with this set. And why this deck is not going to do good? Because you have no access to defensive cards. You just got to hope you can get your normal summon out and just keep swinging for your opponent's monsters. As soon as you get one card on the field, or get some kind of trap card that stops your cards, you lose your monsters, you're going to be probably in a really world of hurt. So unless you get like Fiber Jaw or get two, Tyrant Dragon, go for something like that, you're probably going to lose the game really quickly. Okay? Because as soon as you stop spamming out monsters on the board like you're trying to do yourself, you don't really got a way to out it. So with that in mind, that's going to do it for the video. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please tell me down in the comment section down below. Or by leaving a like and subscribing to my videos if you haven't already. Because it helps you support me. And it helps me make more videos for you to enjoy. Now, like the end of every single one of my videos, I hope the rest of the week is blessed. And I will see you all again in the next video. And with that, I'm out.